Dear Vikings, <laughs> brace yourself, the fight is coming. I'm here to talk to you about stories, how stories are powerful, how stories can shape who we are. Stories have the great power to also shape who we will be in the future. So if there's something with such power, we should be taking care of it. We should learn it, we should embrace it and use it well. So, now think about it. I'll start with saying, sorry, unexpected. <laughs> I'll start talking about one young Viking, a boy. A Viking without a warrior helmet. He had nothing. He had no money, he had no references, he had no contacts, but he had the great idea, had the great imagination, who he he, who we want to be in the future, and he wanted to be a presentation specialist. Yeah, this young Viking happened to be me. And I had this great imagination of making a presentation design agency and helping people to talk, to give, give their speeches. And the only thing I had was just this idea and a lot of work browsing the internet. You know, I was the guy searching, you know, who, who else is a great speaker? Who else has something to say? I looked all these people on the internet, you know, in this shiny offices in New York, Manhattan, you know, the hipster places with bricks and bicycles on the walls. And I said, ah, oh, these kind of people, they're blogging, they're, you know, posting these great ideas on the internet. I will never talk to them. I wish I could spend one hour with such people. You know, maybe I will never talk to them in my life, but it would be great if I could. So do you have this same feeling? Do you feel like a Viking without a helmet, you know, with just a great imagination in your heart? I have a good message for you. You will manage it. One day, there, there was a great opportunity in front of me. There was one great speaker from New York going to the conference in Slovakia, and I'm from Czech Republic. That was 300 kilometers far from me. And I said, I need to do everything to get me to Slovakia and try to talk to this person. Because I knew that to make a living out of my imagination, I need to start talking to people. I need to learn it. I need to learn the skill. So I need to start talking to people. And this was precisely the man. His, his name was Matthias, and he was the co-founder of a great company, Behance Network. For graphic designers, it's the company, you know, it's the place where you want to have your graphic, graphic design work, the portfolio. Great company, New York. And I said, oh my God, what should I do? What should I do? So, I looked at the conference and the first obstacle, no tickets available, all sold. So what do you do? I put up the phone and say, hey guys, organizers, I really love how you make marketing to this conference. You know, I wished I could go to the conference and talk to one speaker, but unfortunately, there's no ticket available. But maybe next time, you know, but you're doing the great job. And they say, hey, Lucas, why don't you come as a VIP person? And I said, yeah, why not? Yeah, that would be perfect. You know, so I went there as a VIP person. Obstacle number one, no obstacle at all. So I came there and this Matthias gave a talk great speech, and I was there like, ah, what to do next, what to do next, I need to speak out loud. And I was sitting where you were sitting, and I was like shipwreck, you know, I was, my heart was bouncing, I needed to ask from the audience, I needed to make, to, you know, stand up and show his face, I show my face to him. So, I got my nerves together, and I asked the most stupid question of all, what I asked, you know, so the f second obstacle, you know, getting used to your physical nerves when you're trying to speak out, is the no, st no obstacle at all as well. And then the third thing, when he stopped his speech, so I said, oh, this is the time. Now I need to reach to him and say my story. I need to share my passion and I just, I will try my best, you know. And he stopped talking and he was going from the stage 
and just imagine an unreachable person. You know, he, he was almost like flying, glowing, shining, you know, and he was going there. And I said, okay, okay, little, little Viking, little Viking, okay, go on, go for it. And I said, Matthias, I really loved your talk. You did a great job. I'm the one who asked from the audience, you know, and I'm Lucas, and I take care about presentations. I try to help people make better presentations from Czech Republic, but I would like to, you know, share it. I would like to know your opinion from the graphic designer's point of view. I would like to know your opinion. Would you have a minute to talk to me about presentation design and about presentations? Can I, can I get you a drink? And he said, the mighty God. And he said, yeah, why not? Hold my back. I will go to the toilet. <laughs> and I was, I was there, standing with his back. <laughs> that mighty person from New York, from that hipster office, holding his back, and he's on the, in the toilet. <laughs> you know, even such people go to the toilet. <laughs> it's total game changer. Total game changer, but it didn't end it there. We then spent one hour at his hotel. Well, interviewing, of course. <laughs> interviewing. So he spent one hour in the hotel's lobby talking about presentations. And at that moment, when my imaginary obstacles were shattered, and I said, everything is possible, you know, through sharing my story, through taking the chances, I made this statement. Ah, sorry. And I'm saying that I will finish my project keeping eye on presentations and presentations design in Czech Republic, Slovakia and Middle Europe. And if I, if I don't, then Matthias Kura can slap me in the face. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm here because I don't want to get slapped. Thank you. Thanks for your appreciation. So we are all Vikings. We have this opportunity to speak out loud, to reach out to people we don't think we will reach. And this is where you get your imaginary Viking helmet on. And since that time, 2011, I try to get into this topic. I try to help as many people as possible. And now I would like to share with you five rules that if you embrace and you will use, you will be great Viking storytellers. You know, through that time, I learned that always these five rules are repeating, are going on and on and on. So please, do you have your bows ready? Because this session is also an archery training, so to speak. So do you have bows? Raise your bows and say, I have a bow. I have a bow. Yeah, great. So, the first rule you need to make is make your finest arrow. If you will be in the battle, you need the weapons. You know, you need your weapons. You need to make your finest arrow. This is my, my finest arrow. It's made out of two chopsticks and a little bit of aluminum, but I love it. This is my arrow. The arrow has three parts, the fletching, the shaft, and the arrowhead. All these three parts have meaning. These parts have meaning, you know, the fletching to navigate the arrow, the right direction. The shaft is there to keep the energy, to make the arrow fly. And the arrowhead is there to make the impact, to make it through the obstacles, through the armor of the enemy, and make the real impact. You know, with the stories, it's the same. You need to prepare your story with three parts, the opening, the middle part, and the closing part. And I usually see presentations or you know, sharing the story w when there are no these three parts. And it's, it's a pity you know, when you have this great opportunity and you didn't say it well. No matter if it's two minute presentation or just half an hour talk, you need to open well. You need to say to your audience that, hey, this is for me. This is going to my direction. You know, you need to use everything you have, the strongest arguments you have, the stories, the shocking facts, you know, just to hook them on at the very beginning, not to lose them. Then there is place for factual things. You need to say the factual things, you know, why we are here for. But don't forget about this thing, about the closing, about the follow-up, 
the key message at the, at the end. So when you will be talking to somebody during the break and somebody asks you, hey, what do you do? And you say, hey, um, I'm a student, I study this topic and I really, I really love it. And you say, that's interesting. Yay, <laughs> thanks. That's not enough, you know, you, you need to make a good closing. Yeah, do you find it interesting? Tell me more. Can I send you something? Can you link me to some other person who is also interested in this topic? You know, it's going on. It's not a closed road. So this is the first thing. Without these three parts, it's like throwing sticks at your enemies without these three parts, you know, useless. So please bear this in mind. The second rule when you're sharing your story is when you want to conquer the lands, you want to start a fire, there's not enough an arrow. You need a fire arrow. And adding fire to your story means adding emotions to your story. Everything what you just heard is full of emotions and that's why it's so powerful. When we just share the factual things, I like presentations and I would like to help somebody in presentations. You know, no emotions at all. We need to share the emotions because on the emotional level, we connect to people. We need to say how we feel, how people we interact with, how they feel. You know, and reshaping the old projects we are presenting can have two different meanings. You know, either you can say, oh, we are adding these features, and that's it. Or you can say, we are adding this feature because we know that it's needed, that people actually ask for it, and because of this feature, it impacts the way how you use it. Maybe. There's one, uh, one project I was working with, Gina Software. They are saving lives around the globe. They are making a system to navigate the rescuers in the field, in Haiti, Japan, everywhere. And they used to say that, what do you do? And we are making a geographic information assistant. Well, that's nice, that's nice. But then we reshaped it and add some emotions to it. And then when asking, what do you do? They said, we reinvent the way how rescuers save lives in the field. Can you feel the difference? Because there are emotions, there are real people. And that's the adding fire to your arrow. The third rule is, just imagine, you are a Viking, you're an observer, you're a warrior, and you need to somehow tackle the situations. You're going to the thunderstorm with your ship, what do you do? Would you continue? Probably not, because then your crew would die and all your Viking story would end. If you're going to the battle and the battle somehow changes, what do you do? Would you keep the strategy? No, you would act upon it. So another rule is observe the battlefield. And the same is with in communication. What I see when speakers are talking to other speakers, they're in their communication bubble. You know, they're so into their head that they're, I need to tell you something, I need to tell you this, and I need to tell you this. And sometimes the people are just going away. And the speaker, when he's sharing the story, like, I need to tell you this, and I need to tell you this. Why is he going somewhere? Why is he going still further and further? And he was like, I hate you. You're going to my, uh, my safe zone. I hate you, really. And that's the observation that the communicator needs to do. I need to observe that, ah, probably something is missing. Something is wrong. Maybe, okay, probably, I mean, I'm too close to him. So I will change the situation. Okay, I'll take... I'll give you some space, and now listen. And he's like, okay, he got it. Now I will be listening to him. So observation. The fourth rule before you start shooting is actually controlling your posture. When you will be shooting, you'll be shooting your arrow. It's very necessary to stand right when you're shooting the arrow. You won't have your tables where you can hide you won't have ballistas to shoot instead of you. You will be just there on your own, naked. You know, so there is, there is one thing. You need to stand right. So the first thing is to find the center of your gravity. You know, can you imagine shooting the arrow like this? 
No, because otherwise you would fall. You would fall. The same is in sharing your story. You need to stand straight. You know, very competent and believing in your story. The se second thing is use open gestures, like stretching the bow. Like stretching the bow. How would you stretch the bow? Would you stretch the bow here? It looks weird, right? What about your gestures? Are you doing these gestures? No, the same thing. Would you stretch your bow here? No, you have no power there. So you will make your gestures open wide below your shoulders and your belt, just like stretching your bow. And that's the same shooting your arrow. And the third thing is make eye contact. Find me one picture of Legolas, Katniss Everdeen, other great archers, not looking where they are shooting. You won't find such picture, you know? So you need to make an eye contact and keep your eye on your audience all the time because you're giving the speech to them. This is one quiz. I was picking my fellow warriors. Who would you, who would you like to fight with? This Ministry of Silly Wolves archers? No, the bowman number two. And the final rule of all, last but not least, is fire your arrows as often as possible. Find the opportunities when you can speak with the, with the people, just like I did my travel to took my chances with Matthias. Share your story as often as possible. And when I'm saying as often as possible, now is the time for you. So I would like to be part of this, of this session, this Viking workshop. You have your arrows ready, you have your bows ready. So please, take the pen. The first thing you need to do is take the pen and there is a little paper on the arrow. Sorry, it's not tombola. There are no presents ready for you. But you have more power with this because you will write down what you have to say. Write down your name and what do you, what do you want to achieve, your passion. So I would write down, Lucas, changing the world of presentations. So please write down your message. Yes, great. Vikings, on my command, S stretch your bow. Still no. If you don't have it, just lock and load. Stretch your bow, and on my command, we'll share your stories. If you get hit, just find the person, talk to him about the situation. <laughs> And maybe something incredible will happen in the future. So guys, please, stretch your bow. Not on me. <laughs> Not on me. Please share your story to the audience, to the crowd, to the, to the world. Be careful about the eyes. Just stretch your bow. And one, two, shoot. <laughs> Great. Such a warfare. <laughs> Woo! Great. <laughs> dear Vikings, dear Vikings, you did a great job. I think you are prepared for the battle. Can I have one last moment of your attention, please? I know the battle is fierce and it continues. I would like to leave you with these five rules. Please bear this in mind all the time. Keep in mind the structure of your stories. Keep, mind, keep in mind the adding emotions to your stories about observing the situation 
about standing right when you're sharing your story and about sharing it as often as possible. So you do this and you will be, you will be a great Viking storyteller. Thank you very much.